All right, continuing on with functions, let's um, consider the example in the processing editor. We have a void setup function. So I'll uh, draw it like this. So we have setup. Inside of setup, I have x, which is 10, and I have y, which is 20. Now, nothing else is being loaded in memory because they're not being called by setup. So let's call the sum function. We have been working with sum for a while now. Um, let's call it this way. So what happens if I call sum this way? So I pass x and y. Basically what happens here is sum is created in memory. So that's sum. Um, x is copied into a. So in sum we have a. Um, actually, so sum is going to have memory in, divided in half. So we have a. x is copied into a. So x is 10. So a is going to be 10. And y is copied into b, b uh, y is 20, so b is going to be 20. And we actually have no local variables in sum. We're going to return a plus b, which is 30. We're going to return it to setup because it's a calling function, but there's nothing there, right? There is no, so we don't do any, so the, the call works, um, it compiles if I run it. The call works completely, it's just that we're not doing anything with the result. So the result is, is wasted, so it's a pretty useless function call the way, the way we have it. We can do a couple of things with it. For instance, I could define another variable here and store some inside of that. So I could say int um, res, and so res is going to be declared here it's going so we're going to have res and then when we run it of course 30 is going to be stored so when we say return a plus b this gets destroyed uh, but but now we have 30 stored um, in in res all right well there is another thing i could do with it and for example i could actually go ahead and say print whatever the output of sum is going to be. So whatever the output of sum, I'll say just, so, so don't store it anywhere, print it, right? So if I run it, now 30 is printed to the screen. I'm not storing 30 anywhere. It's still being returned by sum. It's still being returned by sum, but, but, but I'm, not, I'm not saving it anywhere. So a couple of things I could do. Uh, so, so I called this, uh, three ways uh, in, in three different ways um, first I called it like that so I could call it on its own like that I could have res in there do it like that or I could just call it uh, within print ln um, so all three function calls are perfectly legal uh, except this one <laughs> because I'm actually not making it I actually don't have the name of the function so all, all these function calls are perfectly legal and uh, program runs this is the only one that's actually producing it producing an output right now um, so let's go and try to call say uh, hello so if I called say hello first of all I would just because because there is no return value I would just say say hello and when I say return so hello is going to be printed out I couldn't do something like that though I couldn't say for example int um, temp 
equals say hello because there's nothing being returned. So let's see what happens when I do this. It's a compilation error because it says the return value is void. I can't put it into, into, uh, temp. So that's, um, that's quite, uh, important to remember. Moreover, um, although this is, this is printing, I'm just uh, going to print, um, make a point here. If I have print ln say hello and um, I run that, it still do it doesn't work because if it doesn't have a return value, so when you say print ln and you put a function inside, what you're actually saying is you're saying to output the result of this function. Did everybody get that? So it means you want to out you want to print the output of say hello, but say hello doesn't have any output, meaning it doesn't actually return anything back. So this gives you an error message. Okay, excellent. Um, the other thing that I wanted to talk about is, so here, inside this void, if I say, for example, return, so if I say up here, if I say int a and I say return a, guess what's going to happen? We're going to get an error because you have said this is a void function. If it's a void function, you cannot simply have, uh, you cannot simply return an integer back. So that is, it's going to give you an error. There is a way to have a return here and it's, it's, it's this way. So if, if I have return nothing, if I just have return, then it works. Because I'm actually not returning anything. I just have the return statement in there. Um, why is this useful? It's, it's really not useful. If you have a return statement at the end of a void function, it basically doesn't do anything. So, that's it's nothing if if however you put return in the middle of a function it just quits uh, abruptly so um it's the program is a little bit busy now but if you look at setup and i'm going to clean everything else up so if i run setup right now if i if i run this program what's going to be outputted is 30 30 is going to be outputted um, because we are only making a function call to sum. If I put return x here, what's going to happen? It's going to be an error because I can't return anything because setup is a void function. But if I just said return and I try to run this, it gives us an error because of the fact that uh, it says that I can never reach the rest of the code so because the function f basically terminates here abruptly and processing takes up an, an issue with that so um if you put it if you put this return at the end here you see that it works and it doesn't give us an error but it's useless at the end where this could become useful is if you put it inside a condition. So for example, if I said here, if x is greater than nine, return, that means if x was ever greater than nine, just, just end the program. You see that it does it, nothing, nothing prints, right? So this could be used, uh, just as I said in the previous uh, video, this could be used to um, end the program based on illegal input or unusual um, conditions. Let's do another example of return types. So let's say I have void setup and I have a function that is of boolean type. So boolean, I'll call it compare. 
and boolean will take two variables a and b it's going to return true if a is greater than b otherwise it's going to return false so it would say if a is greater than b return true else return false here the way we could call this function is multiple different ways so for example let's say we have int a 10 and b we'll set it to 5 the couple of ways we could we could uh, um, do uh, we could call this function one way is we could just simply say boolean and we would say result and we could just call this function we say compare a b so this will be sent and then the result will be back so in this case a uh, result is actually going to be true because a is greater than b another way we could do this which is perhaps more interesting is we could say if compare a and b that means if the if the output of this is true then print ln a is greater than b else you would print b is equal or greater than a so here it's it's quite interesting what happens is compare a and b is going to evaluate to either true or false so here this is our function call right here when we make this function call we go into this function and we either obtain true or false based on the result all right let's do another um, quick problem let's consider having a setup where we have an int x y and z all initialized and let us call um, so we'll say int result or actually I'll be more specific so let's say this let's say these are the dimensions to a rectangular cube so volume is going to call a function calc volume and send x y and z to this function now one thing you have to realize is that if we do this in processing we're going to get an error because processing is going to be like i don't have um uh, a calc volume function uh, so on, on, unless unless you have a calc volume function you can't call call it so now let's go ahead and have this function <clears throat> with a slightly different color uh, so the return type is int because volume is waiting for an integer value um, the name is going to be calc wall and we're receiving three integers so i'm going to call it um, with int length and int height okay and this is going to say 
return w times l times h and this will do the do the trick now i could technically have another function so i could say i could have an area function so i could say int area and i'll say area is going to take a and b and i could say return a times b now here i could actually change my volume function and go ahead and say return w times area and i would pass l and h to area so now i have set up calling volume volume calling area and then area returning the value back to volume and calc volume will return back to to setup so let's just um draw the memory diagram so the computer the program starts here i'm going to have in my setup i have an x which is two y which is three and z which is five then we have wall which is set to garbage at this point we're going to call volume so volume is created and control is actually with volume now so actually with calc wall then calc wall is going to have a w which is which x is copied here y is copied here and z is copied here so w is whatever x is which is 2 l is whatever y is which is 3 and z is h is whatever z is which is 5. there are no locals no local variables then we come here and we say return w times area so we make a function call to area so area is up here area is going to receive a and b whatever is inside of l is going to be in a whatever is inside of h is going to be in b so l contains three so a is going to be three b is going to contain whatever h contains which is five and again this one doesn't have any locals either so a times b is going to generate three times five so it's going to generate 15. 15 is going to come all the way here and when we say return this guy is gone so 15 is gonna be here so this statement let me change color so this statement here now contains 15 then we have w which is 2 times 15 so that's 30 we say return that this is going to die as well and now this entire statement this entire uh, expression will have it's 30 so inside of volume we're going to have let me erase we're going to have 30. so if you followed me in this example you should be in in really good shape um, and if um, you are not understanding this example please make sure to ask your tas or ask m myself um, other in the labs or send me an email to come see me this is a very very critical example all right so there is one more topic left in functions and I'm going to do 
um, a tutorial, one or possibly two tutorials on functions, they're going to be extremely important. So please make sure that you go over those uh, tutorials. But before we finish, I want to go over this topic called function overloading. Um, this is, imagine if you have uh, a need to have a print function one function is going to print an integer the other function is going to print a double we both know we, you know we know that um you cannot have the same function do to do the same thing you cannot have one basically a function either takes a double or takes an takes an integer you can't have a function ta taking two so what we end up doing is we're going to call one of them one thing and the other one some, something else. But this could become quite cumbersome. Basically, um, you're going to have a whole bunch of print functions. Um, maybe one print function prints two integers, one prints um, two doubles, one prints a string. So then you have to call, you have to name these uh, functions something, something else. You have to come up with creative names to call all these functions. And that's going to be the output here. You're calling my print one and my print two. What if you could actually have the same name for a function, but have it contain different values, different parameters? This is called function overloading. So function overloading is basically having the same name, but have different number of parameters so that the computer doesn't get um, confused. So I have the theoretical stuff over here for you to, to go over. Uh, but basically, if you have a function sum that takes um, three doubles, and you have another function sum that takes two doubles, this is allowed. So you can name your function the same thing, um, but because they, there, is a, there is a difference um, between the number of parameters that they take, uh, this is allowed and, and we, can, we can use this. The processing uses this quite a bit. You guys probably remember function random, um, where you see, it, it, sometimes it takes one variable, sometimes it takes two or three uh, parameters. Uh, this, is, this is the reason. So basically, what you want to do, you want to make sure that um, you have uh, functions if, if you want to if you want to do function overloading you want to make sure that the number or type of parameters are different you don't care about the return type at all you just care about the number or type of parameters so here another example we have uh, three doubles and then we have three integers this is also this is also allowed because um, the compiler can distinguish between these because it says, okay, well, this is taking three integers, this is taking three, three doubles. So it does distinguish them as being two different functions. These ones, however, it, it, it won't be distinguished. So if, if this is an int and this is a char and they're both, they both don't take any, ar any arguments, this is not function overloading, right? Let's see about this one, int compare. So this is because this is taking two integers, this is taking two characters, and this is taking an integer and a character. So all of these are fine because they have different signatures. And by signatures, we mean the number or type of parameters. And this is uh, function overla overloading indeed. The topic of functions is a very important topic in programming. I have a couple of uh, slides for, for summary that I would like you guys to go over it. I'll go over the first page really, really quickly just to make sure that um, everybody understands, but I make sure to go over the second page as well. First of all, functions are useful for, for many tasks and they are blocks of code that are broken and that, that, you, that you break up a problem into series of uh, different um, blocks of code. Processing as a language is generally a, a function library. There are a lot of functions you use 
uh, that are quite useful such as line, ellipse, rect, and many others. Active mode provides you with setup and draw functions and those functions are the drivers behind your, your program. You can define your own user, um, define functions that are going to be the building blocks behind your code. Um, you pass arguments to functions. Uh, if uh, you pass arguments to two functions uh, and also you you receive an output known as the return value you have to uh, make sure to remember that functions can return at most one value to back to the calling function uh, please make sure you start to to watch the videos carefully and also watch this uh, look over the slides I will also have uh, more support slides posted, such as uh, steps to design functions, and as I said, more tutorials um, for, for this topic. Thank you very much.